All right, so in this video, I'm gonna show you how I am going to seal the fresh air intake under the cowl here on my 99XJ. I did a water test for my girlfriend sprayed a bunch of water all over the vehicle, and I looked and up in the firewall where the HVAC box meets the firewall, I do have a couple of leaks. So it's not coming from my windshield, and I am fairly certain that it is coming from the seal on the fresh air intake. So I'm going to have to remove this cover. I'm going to have to cut away some sheet metal, get in there with some RTV, seal that up. But before I do that, I'm going to show you a couple of other areas to look at so that you're not doing this job and it's not necessary. So let's get to it. So a couple of places to look for potential problem for a leak is under the hood. If you have debris built up in this area here, Right down in this area is where your HVAC box comes through your firewall and or one of the areas your AC lines come out of here. So if there's a bunch of debris in this area, it could cause water to flow up over this lip here and then down and get into that. It's hard to see, but that foam area, which does deteriorate over time and does allow water in sometimes. In my case, I know that after I spray the Jeep with water, that area is not wet, so I'm not too concerned about that, even though that foam pad doesn't look the best. Another area to look at is down here, there is a bent rubber tube, and you can see where the water has been flowing out of that tube. And that's your AC condensation line, I believe, but water comes out of there, or it's supposed to. If it's not, then that might be clogged up, and that could be causing your leak as well. Leaf and Jeep did a good video on different ways that you can check for a leak, and that is usually one of the culprits. So mine actually leaks a lot. I get a lot of water out of that tube, so I know that mine's not clogged up, but if it is, you can watch some videos on how to unclog that. So again, that's not a concern of mine. I'm fairly certain that my issue lies under here where the fresh air intake is, so that's what I'm gonna tackle now. All right, so in order to do this job, the absolute must-haves besides your safety equipment would be a Phillips head screwdriver or drill to get the cover off. And then you wanna have either a die grinder, a cutoff wheel, or a Dremel to cut into the cowl. I ended up using an electric grinder because it worked a lot faster than the die grinder. And then I used the Dremel with the cutoff wheel to do the corners so that I wouldn't overcut my areas. You'll also want to have some kind of file to file off the edges of the sheet metal when you're done cutting those. And then in my case, I'm going to go ahead and put primer on all the edges so that they don't rust in the future. You're also going to want to have some kind of silicone or RTV to put around the plastic cover. In my case, I use the Ultra Copper just because I already had it open and it usually dries out on me, so I figured I'd use it. You might want to have a flashlight so you can see what's going on in there for whatever you can see. And then also I taped off some areas so that I wouldn't cut myself while I was putting my hand inside the cowl area to put the silicone. So other than that, I just used a marker to mark off the area that I wanted to cut so that I wouldn't cut somewhere while I was in the moment that I didn't want to. And then some towels to lay over the Jeep if you care about that kind of thing so you don't scratch it up. Because I did have to lay across the entire hood in order to get all the way behind the cowl uh, section where the back of the plastic cover is. So that was pretty much everything that I used. If you have anything else that you can think of, feel free to leave those in the comments. How I realized where the relief was coming from is I was in here when the water was being sprayed. I looked up at the mating area where the box goes to the firewall and I could clearly see leaks coming down the firewall here. So that's how I knew exactly where the leak was coming from. And I recommend that you do the same thing with your carpet out so that you're not chasing a bunch of problems that don't exist. So in order to remove this cover, you need to take off all the screws to pop the cover off, but also your wiper blades need to come off. So this point here, this uh, bent bracket here, just needs to be pried up so that the clip is released and then these should pop off. They could take a little bit of work to do, so just take your time with them so you don't damage anything. Now, if you have a bunch of debris built up in this area after you take that cover off, it could be that your water flow is just not operating properly. So if you clear that debris, that might 
possibly take care of your issue, so something you might want to consider. I don't have a lot of debris up here. I'm going to brush all this away, but this is not the reason that the box way back there is leaking. Now, you can't really see that all the way back there, but that's where I need to go. So what I'm going to do is cut out this whole section so that I can get in there with my hand. Now, you got to be careful not to cut your screw points, which there are a few. So I'm going to end up cutting around those. Hopefully I can find my Dremel to do that intricate work. And then the rest I'll just hit with a die grinder. I'll probably leave this part up here uncut and just fold the whole thing back so that I can fold it back in place and somehow secure it from underneath. And I don't weld, so what I'm going to do is just seal that area with more RTV. But that's going to be a trial and error type thing as I go, and that's what I'm going to do now. All right, so there it is. It looks a bit sketchy, and it kind of is. In other videos, I didn't see anybody cut as far left as I did, and I think the reason is because of this channel, you don't really want to cut into that. I actually did. You can see a little bit right here, but that's okay because it's attached along the whole back here, and it did take a little finagling to get that out, but that channel is there to stop the water from going through these whole areas and going straight down into your HVAC unit. So that channel will be in this place and then put the water to the side of the white wall there and or in front of it and keep the water from going in. But, and I don't know how well you can see this, but you can see that down here there is no insulation, foam, anything left. So water is just going right down this channel here inside here and probably just soaking everything around it and that's probably where my water leak is coming from, or it's coming from the back there. Either way, there is nothing keeping water from going here. So somebody on a Facebook post just said that all they do is take the cover off and seal the whole thing. The problem with that is that side of the cover has holes in it, and water would get in there, come down through there, and over to here. So depending on what angle I'm sitting at, water is still going to get into this area. I need to stop the water from getting inside here. And the only way that I, from what my research shows, to do that is to basically seal that whole area on the outside. So that is what I'm gonna attempt to do. I've got a ton of filings from grinding all the sheet metal. So I need to clean all this up, reach back in there. I'm probably gonna end up having to lay across the Jeep to get my hand all the way back here. But by cutting this far, it's going to be a lot easier for me to reach back there, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, because I'm only about 150 pounds, this is okay. I'm actually kneeling at the top part of this. I've had people walk on this hood and put dents in it already, so it's going to happen. But having this cut as far back as I can, getting in on this angle, I can get all the way behind the other side and clean this out, which is what I'm doing. Just trying to take a damp cloth, clean all around the edges so that when I RTV it, it actually sticks to the metal and the plastic and not to the dirt. If I didn't cut this far back, I just, I don't see, without doing some other tricks that other people did, which included just dumping a bunch of epoxy or silicone or something just all around here and hoping that it seals up. Uh, the major weakness, he even drilled a hole over here in this part of the body and poured some material down there to seal it off. And I believe it worked for him. Um, just not something that I wanted to do, um, especially since I was going to cut this open anyway. Might as well try it this way. I really don't want to put a hole in the body more than I've already cut this thing open, but at least this part is covered. 
So this is what it looks like. Off camera, what I did is I filed all the edges all the way around underneath as much as I could and on top. I took a damp cloth, went over all the edges so when I do RTV it later, it'll stick to the metal and the paint. I'm also going to, before I even do any of that, take primer and dab all the edges with primer on this piece and this piece. And then somebody on Facebook mentioned, and this was a good point, that in all the corners to go ahead and round them out or else it creates stress points if you have right angles. I used to work with automotive engineers. I uh, should have picked that up on my own, but that was a good suggestion from him. So I took my Dremel and I rounded all the corners so that there wouldn't be stress points. Those back there I couldn't really get to, but even the corners here, I went ahead and rounded those and then you can see I did it inside these as well. So next, I am going to RTV this thing. I'm not going to show you that. I'll show you the result, which is going to be a sloppy mess, but I'm going to get as much RTV around the corners as I can and take my time doing that so that it's done at least properly, even if it doesn't look that way. All right, so I just took a few camera angles of the silicone in the back there, and it looks like I got everything. So what you need to silicone is in between the plastic and that lip right there. So if you go below the lip, you're actually not doing anything. That lip was manufactured with part of the pressing of the sheet metal. So you need to get in between the plastic part and the sheet metal, force silicone down in there, and that's exactly what I did all the way around. I just put it on the tip of my finger and then slowly just kept doing that all the way around. And like I said, I just took a movie back there with my phone and it looks like I've got every area. So what I'm going to do is give this a few hours to dry till tonight. That should be enough time. And then I'm going to take a hose and I'm going to put water down here all around and just see if I can see any drips. Rather than put this thing all back together, spray water all over it and then find a drip and not sure be sure where it is I'm gonna go ahead and do that all right so I just did a water test and painted all the edges with primer I put two coats of primer on just took a foam brush and brushed it all onto the edges underneath and on top I also took a hose and dumped a whole lot of water around here while I had a rag stuck inside there and it didn't leak. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this thing back together. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that. And if after I do a spray test, when that's completed, then I've got a problem inside the engine bay. Either one of the foam seals is leaking or something else. I'll have to chase that if that is the problem. But as of right now, no leaking inside the cab and just hope for the best at this point. Okay, so what I did after I folded this back down and had to finagle it so that the drip tray would go back in. It was a little disfigured because of that. So I manipulated a little bit with my hand and then I took this Harbor Freight magnetic bar and attached it to the edges as well as the cover. That holds it up and keeps it from dropping back down. While it's like that, I went ahead and took this pick and went around the edges, pulled up the areas that I needed to pull up and then pushed down the edges that I needed to push down. To be honest, that took me about half an hour to get it to the point where I think it's flush enough that I'm going to go ahead and RTV it. At one point, I did have one of these nestled in here in between these grooves, and that's how I was going to hold it up from underneath. But when I put the cover on, the cover's so flat that it created a bump high enough that debris would have been able to get in from this side and rain while I was driving, which isn't a big deal because it's okay for this area to get wet. What is a big deal is when you have a lot of debris get up underneath there and if you don't clean it out it traps that water and it can even end up going up underneath your seals and if your seals are old and cracked then your window is going to leak quicker than it should. So for that reason I'm shying away from that. I'm hoping that by RTVing this entire area and keeping the RTV somewhat flush here so that that cover doesn't stay too proud this will hold it in place. 
If it doesn't, then this is going to drop down when I take this magnet off tomorrow morning. But it's worth a shot. It's all I've got. I tried to find something to prop underneath here to keep this up, but I just couldn't find anything in my shop that would work. So the RTV method only is the way that I have to go. And again, just hope for the best. Okay, so it's the next morning and it's the moment of truth of if this gasket sealer will actually hold that in place. I've already decided that if it does or does not, I'm actually going to drill a hole through the cover and also through this and I'm going to secure this and keep it up against the cover by having a screw through both of them. Yeah, you can see that it's already breaking. The magnet was somewhat of a good idea to hold it in place, but now actually it popped up and it didn't fall down. So that is a problem and you can see that it just cracked right there. So don't do that. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is now that this is holding and is in a position that I want it to be in, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the broken gasket sealer and I'm going to reapply more. And then later on today, at the end of the day, after this stuff dries, I'm gonna do a water test. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be important that this part doesn't leak, um, especially if it's okay if it leaks over here because it's not over the intake and the water will just drain away. But here, you've gotta be protective of. All right, so I had to bust out the licorice flavor since I was running out of the other stuff, and it was nice to see where I was recoding. So I kind of went over the whole thing one more time. I'm a little worried about some of these bumps that were created from trying to get this to seal in the wire gaps. The cover's not gonna sit flush like it needs to, so debris probably gonna end up getting up in there. Good thing is, is, if you take off a few screws here, you can lift it up and see what's going on underneath and even take an air hose and blow it out. So this is just gonna have to be a regular thing for me to check on this and make sure that it's not leaking and to watch underneath the firewall to see if I have any leaks as well. But I feel a lot better about it. I think this is gonna work at least for the short term. And if this has to be something that I just reseal every year, every two years, then no big deal. All right, well, after all that work, I still have a leak up underneath here. So that could be a way that you can fix your cowl if that is your leak. Hope you enjoy the video because that wasn't my problem. Even though I looked inside the engine bay over and over, I missed because it was so hard to see that it was actually my blower motor. I could just sprayed some water down in this area to see if it is that and it in fact is so that is going to be taken care of at another time so hope you enjoyed the video please leave your comments below i'm sure there's going to be many of them if you have any tips tricks didn't like something that you saw whatever it may be but thanks for watching and have a great day